Kevin Bain wound up and slapped the ball out of his hands without him looking. John Morant said he was fine in the West. Dylan Brooks called him old, said all he needed to do was force him left, and hit him below the belt, which were just a few of many questionable acts from DB and the Memphis Grizz to try and rattle LeBron Raymond James Sr. Stay tuned to find out exactly how King James responded. Every bit of nonsense LeBron had to deal with from the Memphis jealous haters, plus how he responded most prominently on the court, but also off it on social media. Before that affair that lasted six games, but the Grizzlies trash-talking of the King well before this series, in addition to in the midst of it, is why we could see an ESPN 30 for 30 covering this matchup down the line. For now, your boy D Flo will do his best to sum up this heated beef and how LeBron and the post-trade deadline phenom Lakers would be utterly unintimidated by the second seed in the West. Don't forget when this Laker Grizzly beef all started, last season when Jaron Jackson Jr. and company started trash talking the King at the foul line and LeBron would proceed to dunk on Triple J's head. The next season, this one in 22-23, would see a pushing and shoving hold me back grudge match ensue between Shannon Sharp of Fox Sports and Grizzly center Steven Adams. Sharp also goes by Le Shannon, if you were unaware, and has made a name off challenging the salty LeBron hatred from Skip Bayless with appreciation for the King. The Grizzlies weren't having that, however, evidently wanting to throw hands with the biggest James supporter in the media. From there, while this wasn't a direct shot at LeBron or the Lakers, a man now holding the NBA's throne as GM God in Rob Palinka may have took Ja Morant, saying he was quote-unquote fine in the West during an interview with Malika Andrews personally. Polinka's deadline acquisitions of Vanderbilt, Hachimura, D-Loading, Bees, and Bamba contributed on and off the court with either vibe enhancement or hard-nosed defense to completely outclass the quote-unquote fine in the West Grizz. However, the trash talk most prominently came from a man who's been a LeBron hater since 2012, based off this tweet in Dylan Brooks. But flashing back to when Brooks would first initiate this back and forth publicly with James two years ago during the regular season in 2021. After ripping the ball loose away from Braun, Brooks would make an and one and aggressively flex over top James when he was still on the ground, walking over him in what was an obvious taunt. With the Lakers up three down the stretch of that crowdless pandemic regulated game, the lack of audience members didn't spoil the dramatics as James would take advantage of Brooks gambling for a steal using a curry slide to get the first step before transitioning to the post using a dream shake at the elbow before spinning back to his right shoulder for a Durko fader, arcing it over the top of Dylan, then using the too small celly on his trot back defensively. However, Brooks evidently came far from learning his lesson right there. Long before the Grizz and Lakers kicked off their series a few weeks ago, we knew that Dylan didn't fare well against LeBron historically. James had a 9-2 record against Brooks entering their recent series. Brooks averaged under 11 points in those outings. LeBron averaged over 25. In three games over the 2021 season where these two matched up, when Brooks was guarding James in particular, which equated to a total of just 17 minutes played, LeBron scored 32 points in that limited time, shooting 13 for 21 from the field. Still, that didn't stop DB from mincing his words. Back in January of this year, after a Lakers win against Memphis, James shot 8 for 21 from the field, so not great. And when asked how he slowed James down post-game, Brooks said, quote, He doesn't want to go left. I was just making him go left all game. Then he would settle or he would pass the ball, and then play physical with him, continuously bump him all the time, and don't let him take easy shots, end quote. But the weird part about those comments from Brooks was that the late great Kobe Bean Bryant said the exact opposite in 2018. Kobe said in an interview that year about James, quote, For one thing, you have to stop letting him go left. Every big shot that he makes is going left. He's remarkable at getting to that left hand, raising up and shooting. It's amazing. All his shots are either coming over his right shoulder from the post or off the dribble with his left hand. 
That's the first thing I would do, disrupt his ability to go left, end quote. In their series matchup, Brooks was evidently unaware of that quote from Kobe though, and relied off what he himself said back in January. So in game four, with the Lake Show already up two games to one in this series, a one possession game with 31 seconds left in overtime would see LeBron jab step right, sweep through to, you guessed it, his left, and beast down the lane on that side while bodying off Brooks, who desperately tries to catch up, but to no avail. LeBron just hezzy dribbles with that left while he's in the lane, before putting his shoulder down to embrace every bit of contact at the rim, which included Brooks grabbing his arm, having the wherewithal on that left side to then go back to his strong hand for the and one. Lest you forget a game before that, right after Dylan said to the media about LeBron regarding a confrontation they had, quote, I don't care, he's old, I poke bears, I don't respect someone until he gives me 40, end quote. Brooks would come out in game three, an outing before that dramatic and one, by supposedly inadvertently smacking LeBron below the belt. Brooks was ejected on a flagrant two. Maybe this had something to do with what was said in the pregame of the first Laker playoff game in two years on their home floor in Game 3, because it seemed like this bit of pleasantries wasn't the friendliest of exchanges. While James tried to focus on proving Brooks wrong for his disrespectful comments over the past half year by getting buckets, conversely, Dylan tried to live up to his name in a different sense by offering up an inexcusable nutcracker. Maybe the weakest part about this from my fellow Torontonian and Brooks, who I'm ashamed to admit I share a hometown with by the way, is the fact that he evidently ducked the smoke after this series. First he tried to claim the media is the one who strictly labels him as the villain and it has nothing to do with how he acts, after of which in 2K My Career-esque fashion, Brooks would skip his post-game press conferences twice in a row. Meanwhile, in a closeout game six, LeBron would rub in a Euro step with Austin Reeves. Bell Hop tries to give me a Euro step, which is technically traveling. I break his ankle. Maybe teaching the world a greater lesson than what happens when you trash talk James. Austin Reeves is the truth. In all seriousness, not only did LeBron seal a Game 4 win for the Lakers by driving to the very side Dylan said was his weakness, in that same game, he would drive down for the clutch game-tying lane in traffic to send it to overtime, and in the closeout Game 6 at Crypto, James sent Brooks to Cancun by posting 22 points on 76% true shooting, which included 6 dimes, 5 boards, and a steal. Waking up a sleeping beast, given the opponent evident bulletin board material, you'd think would be thought of as a no-no, especially when it comes to the closest second coming of Michael Jordan that anyone's ever seen in the debatable GOAT King James. But in addition to Desmond Bain trash-talking Rui Hachimura and blindsiding LeBron on a play where he could have fractured a finger by aggressively smacking the ball away from him, the trashy engagement from Brooks work to expose the exact issue with these Grizz, their naiveness, extreme lack of leadership, and sparse likability. With the out of his league Brooks getting up in his grill right here back in Memphis for game two, when the Grizz led by 14 at the time, Dylan would attempt to rub it in, but as you can read from LeBron's lips, he rightfully calls him an effing bum. LeBron James in opposition to Brooks and company doesn't duck any smoke, that doesn't mean he enjoys BS like that. Here's what the King said before Game 3 about the drama Brooks was trying to initiate in that one. Have you ever been part of a playoff series where Trash Talk actually impacted me? Game is one in between the four lines. I don't want to talk much more. Uh, tomorrow's going to be a great game. I'm not here for the bullshit. I'm ready to play, and that's it. I uh, appreciate you. From a Grizz perspective, a culture change is without a doubt desperately in order, as their downfall was kind of predictable. Even after Game 5, where they won in a blowout, I would tweet out post-game in response to a video of Bane knocking it loose from LeBron that these guys are impossible to root for. Even a part of their fan base wants them to lose. Lakers will take care of them at the Crip in Game 6, and from there, my message to Memphis will be a few legendary lines from the great Kendrick Lamar. Sit down, be humble. LeBron, meanwhile, is already humble 
as instead of throwing shade at Brooks in the aftermath of this series, he would give a shout out to his youngest son Bryce, who would evidently dominate an AAU game based off the clip, just like Brawny, who had a run-in with Stephen A. Smith by the way, Bryce seems like he'll have a shot to be a pretty good NBA player as well. With LeBron's mentorship and genuineness in their corner, anything is possible. While James was classy in his post-game interview after advancing to round two, he snuck up from behind on Brooks to get him back for the nut shot, tweeting for the first time in half a month by unleashing a monumental poem, which read, Unlike you little inflammatory, I'm a grown-ass man, big shoes to fill inflammatory. Grown-ass pants, probably hustle with your pops. Go ask your parents, it's apparent you're staring at a legend who put a few little inflammatory in their place before trying to eat without saying they grace before. Skip Bayless would give his take in response to that. <sighs> okay, it's my turn now. As a grown-ass man, I can tell you with certainty it's a parade inside my city. Yeah! All in all, as I spouted in a poem a few videos back in a new series I'm calling D-Flow Update, back after Game 4 at Crypto, LeBron Ramon James Sr. is evidently him, and that's what happens when you approach a series with even the slightest bit of grim. I rest my case.